All right, guys, uh, this video is just talking about how to complete WebAssign assignments. Uh, there's tons of other things in WebAssign that we're going to look at, uh, but I'm going to make a video to show some of those things later on. So again, this is just how to complete an assignment. When you log into your class, once you've signed up correctly, the first thing you'll find is this My Assignments right here. This shows you what assignments I have published for you guys. So right now, the only assignment that's published is the Unit Zero Practice. And then over here, you see the due date. So it's due Sunday at 11.59 p.m. We go ahead and click on it. A couple things to notice uh, when it loads. Again, it puts this due date over here for you. So just a reminder of when it's due. Across the top, you'll see that there are 17 questions. I've already been working on this a little bit. And so question number 15, I've already finished. I've got one out of one points. I've got that green check mark. We're trying to get this score to be as high as we can. Uh, if you want to just jump straight to a question, you can just start with question six. So if you click six, it's going to jump down, and now you're ready to start answering question number six. Um, or you can just kind of scroll through and start from one to 17. All right, under assignment submissions, it says you'll submit answers by question. Uh, and then you're also required to use a new randomization after three question submissions. Uh, and your last submission is used for your score. So I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to look at question three. Um, one thing you pay attention to right here, it says zero out of six submissions used. That means that I have up to six attempts before I'm locked out of this question. So you have six attempts, not, you know, with a regular paper and pencil homework, you Finish it, you turn it into me one time, and that's it. With WebAssign, you have six attempts uh, before you're kind of done with this question. Now, anything in red is going to be a different number for different people. So if you're working with a friend that's also in one of my classes, their question number three is going to be similar, but because these numbers are red, that means that they're going to have a different uh, actual set of problems, a set of numbers than you do. But absolutely, you should and you can work with them. You just have to know that your numbers are going to be a little bit different than their numbers. Okay, so I'm going to first type in this wrong answer a couple times so I can show you what happens when we get it wrong. Uh, when you click in a box, it's going to sort of give you a reminder of what it's looking for. So this box says, enter a number as an exact integer or decimal. Uh, so I know that my answer can either be an integer or it can be a decimal. Uh, more than likely, if I look up at question two, this one says it could be a reduced fraction. So this one down here, I don't think we want a reduced fraction. I'm just going to type in some wrong answers. So I'm going to type in one and then hit submit. It's checking it and it's wrong. So there's our red X. That's not good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try two. Okay, that's wrong. Red X again. Notice I've used two out of six submissions. I'm going to type three. Now, I'm going to hit submit answer. And you're going to notice that it told me the right answer was negative four. So now I can look and be like, oh, negative 88 divided by 22. Well, I know that's negative four. But obviously, we still have a red X. And if you look up here, you don't have credit for question number three yet. So it's a little bit different on each assignment. But on this one, you have to click learn it first. Um, and you can look through some of these. Uh, there's tutorials, there's practice. Uh, but then after you come back to this, you'll notice now it has a new randomization. So now I'll click. And you'll notice the numbers changed. So now my problem is negative 66 divided by 22. Uh, I know that's negative 3. Submit answer. And there we go. Green check marks are what we're going for. And you'll notice up here now we have. Uh, question three, we have credit for it. So this saves your progress. There's no submit um, assignment button at the end. Right now, if I go look in your web assigned gradebook, I'll see that you have an 11.1%. Um, some other things that I want you to be aware of. Over here, this ask your teacher. So you'll notice that each question has ask your teacher next to it. Uh, if you absolutely get stuck, if you've tried a little bit, uh, you can click this and it's going to, you can type in sort of what you're thinking or what you're struggling with, uh, hit send, and it's going to send right to me. 
And then we can sort of communicate rather than you trying to copy and paste question number one. When you use this, ask your teacher, I can see exactly what question you're on. Another thing that's nice is previous answers. So you can see your problem and what you've typed in before. This can help you sort of practice. This can help you and I communicate about, oh, down here, maybe I just missed a negative sign. Maybe the answer was negative four and I just forgot the negative sign. Some other things on this question or this one. Uh, down here, you'll notice that when I click in this one, uh, this gray box pops up. Okay, this gray box gives us all sorts of different things. So it does have some signs here, but you also notice it has a fraction button. Uh, you can use that to make fractions, or you can just use the slash right by the shift key. Uh, down here we have exponents. And then as you click through some of these, there's absolute value. Under symbols, there's the pi symbol, there's infinity. Uh, relations, here's our less than, greater than, all those comparisons. Set notation we'll use a little bit. Trig, we won't get to a whole lot. Greek, we won't get to a whole lot. But here's all those different things that you'll want to use over here. Uh, down here for this problem, when we are graphing the inequality, down here you're going to choose either your open circle or your closed circle. You're going to place it on the number line, and then you just use the pencil, just like you would in a normal class, to click on the part that you want to shade. Right there, it's shaded from positive 2 to the right. Uh, down here when we graph, you'll see that when I go to graph equations, I'm going to start over on this one. So this one is graphing y equals negative 2x minus 1. So I can graph that in slope intercept form pretty easy. I'm just going to go ahead and straight go straight to this line tool. And I want it to be a regular line. Now I want one point to be at negative one, so I'm gonna put a dot right there. And then my slope is negative two, that means I'm going to go down two and to the right one and put another dot there. And you'll notice that it puts a line right there. Now one thing before you submit, you wanna check, hit this little line button, and you'll notice that one point is at zero, negative one, which is this point, which is correct. But then this other point is not quite on an intersection. It's at 0.9 and negative three. I want it to be at one negative three. So I'm going to change that to one. You'll notice it moved it over just a tiny bit. Uh, and now if I submit that, it would give me credit. Same thing you're going to graph down here. Now again, there is a button that says submit assignment. If you click that, that is fine, but uh, you actually don't need to click that at all. So if you have any other questions about web assignment,